Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language, currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, and as of fall 2017 at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm back today answering more Patreon supporters' questions, and today I am addressing a question from supporter Miriam Elva, who asks about under what circumstances an Old Norse last name would use the mother's name plus son or daughter, and what exactly the grammar rules are for using a mother's name in that way. As a little bit of background, I've done some videos on the subject of Old Norse naming practices, and among those practices is the use of, rather than inherited last names, patronymics. So most people in English-speaking countries have inherited last names. For instance, my last name is Crawford, my father's name is Crawford, his father's name is Crawford. But in Old Norse or in Iceland today, the last name is typically the father's name plus son for a son or dochter for a daughter. So that, for instance, the god Thor, his full name would be Thor Odin's son because he's the son of Odin. Or the dragon slayer Sigurdr, his full name would be Sigurdr Sigmund's son because he's the son of Sigmundr. As you can see, the typical possessive form of a masculine name is the root of that name plus an S, which is not unlike the English possessive form with apostrophe S. In fact, they're historically related. They come from the same uh, root ending in the ancestor that Old Norse and English share. But feminine names work a little bit differently, typically. Under what circumstances would a person have the mother's name plus son or daughter rather than the father's name? Well, the mother might be higher ranking than the dad. This seems to be the case with, for instance, Loki, who is known as Loki Lauvoir's son after his mother Lauvoir rather than Forbauta's son after his father Forbauti. Uh, there may be something embarrassing uh, in the association with the dad, or perhaps the mom is so famous that it's a little bit more, uh, it, 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 it conveys something more about the family connection to be named after the mom. That could happen too. We have to remember that there's no legal reality to the last names in Old Norse like there is to someone's last name today. I can't just go saying that my last name is Jeffers because I want to or something. My name is legally Crawford. But in Old Norse, a person's, quote, last name isn't enforced by any legal body. So a person could give themselves out as, say, uh, Sigurd's son using the father's name in some circumstances, but, say, Signiar's son using the mother's name Signi under some circumstances if it was advantageous to do so. Because both are true. The person might be Sigurd's son and Signi's son. Uh, and either one might be more advantageous in a different situation. So there's no, his, there's no uh, uh, binding legal reality to the name and the way that we're used to. In Iceland today, the mother's name may be used in someone's last name by that person's choice. Uh, for instance, this may show closeness to the mother. It may show some effort to distance oneself from the father. Maybe the mother's name just sounds better with your first name. There can be a lot of different reasons people choose to use their mother's name in Iceland today, and it's become increasingly popular in the last few decades to use the mother's name rather than the father's. So let's look at some of the grammatical rules for deriving the possessive or generative form of a name. I'm going to look at all of the major forms of masculine and feminine names, and as usual, I'll be using Old Norse pronunciation rather than modern Icelandic pronunciation but I will put a card with links to videos about both Old Norse and modern Icelandic pronunciation. So our typical masculine name ends in ar in the nominative or subject case. So when it's the subject of a sentence, the name Olavr ends in ar, but this is not the root of the name. Typically when we translate names into English, we remove that nominative ar to expose just the root. So we just translate this as Olav. So we have to remember to take off this R because it's not the root, it's just a subject ending. And then we add the S. So Olav becomes Olavs. This is the majority way of forming a masculine uh, name into a possessive or generative form. So then we would just add Olav's son, Olav's daughter. The majority form of the possessive for women's names, women's names typically don't have the R at the end. And they add AR to form their genitive or possessive form. So from Gudrun to Gudrunar. So if you want to say Gudrun's son, it'd be Gudrunar son, Gudrun's daughter, Gudrunar daughter. 
Now let's look at a few of the less common forms using these as our springboards. Among masculine names, sometimes you'll see a double R in the nominative. In that case, one of the R's will be removed to form the genitive, so from Thor to Thors. Sometimes you'll see a double N or double L, same thing. You remove that second N or L to get the root of the name, and then you add the S to make the possessive. So from Odin to Odins, Ego to Egos. Masculine names that end in an I in the nominative end in A in the genitive or possessive form. This is why the poem in which Loki insults the gods is called Loka Sena. It is Loki's truth telling. This Loka form is equivalent to English Loki's with apostrophe S. Some masculine names also have what looks like the feminine possessive form. Historically, this is not a feminine possessive, it's just a separate uh, class of noun that is in. Old Norse more typically associated with the feminine. But you will see it. So for instance, a name like Sigurdr, the R is removed as typical, but rather than adding S, AR is added at the end to make the possessive. So Sigurdr means Sigurds. As Old Norse uh, developed, this became less and less common and more and more of these names adopted the majority uh, masculine form. So you'll also see Sigurds in later Old Norse. Keep an eye out for names that have this vowel, o caudata, this is always caused by a vowel mutation by a u that used to be there. In modernized text, this may be printed as an o with two dots over it. Names with this vowel, whenever they add the ar ending, will see that vowel turn back into an a, so from bjorn to bjarnar for the possessive form, so bjarnar means bjorns. This also, of course, applies to names that are compounded with Bjorn. So if somebody's named Thor Bjorn, Thor Bear, then the possessive form will be Thor Bjarnar. Note that only the second name in a compound name gets turned into its genitive form. So you don't say Thor's Bjarnar, Thor's Bears, you just say Thor Bjarnar. The same thing applies to feminine names that may have this vowel. So Ingi Bjorg with that vowel and the possessive form will be Ingi Bjargar. Same thing with other names that are formed with Bjorg, like Guð Bjorg. Coming back to a couple other sort of minority feminine forms, some feminine names do have the nominative R at the end. When they do, you simply remove that R like you would with the masculine, but you add the feminine AR possessive. There are no feminines that use the S possessive of the masculine. Even though there are masculines that use the AR possessive that looks feminine. A lot of feminine names will add a J between the root of the name and the AR possessive. This applies especially to names that end in ni, so like signi becomes signi yar, not just signi ar. Lauvoi, Lovi's, Loki's mother, is lauve yar. And this also applies to other names in ui. And hell, sort of uniquely, also has that, that j. So the possessive of hell is hell yar. So if someone was the son of hell, he would be hell yar son. Feminine names that end in an a get a U to replace that A in the possessive form. So Freya, goddess of love, the possessive form of her name is Froyu. And that also applies to any other feminine name that ends in A. Although keep in mind that in Old Norse, many names that are translated in English as ending in A don't actually end in A. The A is added as sort of a faux Latinization. So for instance, the name of Odin's wife is Frigg in Old Norse, not Frigga. Hell is hell, not Hela, etc. So I hope this has helped in explaining how different possessives are formed to different types of names. And I thank you for your interest and questions. And from the University of California, Berkeley, I'm wishing you all the best.